and honestly, not only the Hoppy's Feather Duster, but there's so much stuff she has for the Labyrinth matchup. Actually, her, her version of the deck is pretty tacked out to beat that matchup because we have Ash Blossom and Joy Spring in the main deck, there's Panker Tops in the main deck, and those cards certainly are going to be able to help her even going second. There is also a, a small plant, I believe, I've heard she's playing, a level one that allows yeah, her to Yeah, she plays the Spider oh, Rocket in the side deck. But ah. first of all, all the spotlight is going to be on Yoho because he starts this duel off and he searches the big welcome labyrinth with Ariana. That was a very emphatic win of the dice roll, so hopefully yeah. he's got something to follow it up. I mean, this matchup is incredibly difficult for the Rika deck, and losing the dice roll even makes it harder. By the way, if Yoho wins this, this would be the third event in a row that we're, we're casting internationally with the German in the finals, right? That is indeed true. And also, after the uh, win at German Nationals by Din Kabui, this would again be Labyrinth in the finals of yep. a big, big tournament. But it's over to Jessica, and it's only two back row. One of them certainly is going to be Big Welcome Labyrinth. One of them is going to be unknown, but there is this time the Lord of the Heavenly Prison. And honestly, it's pretty good because it does play around the Hapis Feather Duster right away. <laughs> that <laughs> is maybe, true. Maybe he was watching the table next to him. <laughs> Just to mention you guys being so proud of your German competitors, I should point out that this is the, it could be, two years in a row that an English person wins with, with Ricca. No totally. That would be a hero story as well. Statistics again, guys, and it looks like Yoho actually expected this die here, expected the Loki to hit the field, and now we are already welcoming something big time. Totally, and I think we're just going for lovely here. I think the way for Yoho is here just to immediately get that Loki off of the field. I imagine that would be the way here because that's the only reason why you would right away use the big welcome labyrinth here. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me, otherwise, you might. Oh, have to but no, it is Ku Clock! And honestly, Cooklock kind of makes me think that we want to eradicate her here. But is Rika really the deck we want to eradicate her on? I'm not sure. I mean, maybe we're going to play this Lord of the Heavenly Prison now. Oh, along with the Ooh. Ariana. So, and then use the Cooklock to activate whatever we set. There we go. Cooklock is being chained as well. And we can fetch out one of our cards from our deck with the Lord of the Heavenly Prison. And even if it is a trap card, Kuklog enables it to be activated right away. Yeah, quite a fun card, Kuklog, just activating one trap card. That could be really powerful because trap cards are often... Oh, ooh, but like that was the Ruma Cannon, wasn't it? Yeah, and that card just actually saved him in his top eight match. Oh, his yeah. opponent, Baptiste, had three powerful monsters on the field and he just the Ruma Cannon and took a turn off of him. Totally. A really, really, really good card in, at the moment. In Labyrinth X, of course it is, but on top of that, even other decks have been playing this card now. As a Frost target, it really, really is powerful. But Yoho really did nothing about the Lokai so far. Yeah, interesting why he made a bunch of plays there and then didn't activate any of the anything to interrupt True, yeah, I agree. Jessica. It seems like normally you wait to activate your trap cards until you're going to do something to interrupt your opponent. If he wants to eradicate her, he wants to wait until the Sowing is added to the hand? True, but I mean, we we took the um, the Ruma Cannon, so I assume we would just go after a monster Fair that enough. we could book, but uh, now there's a Link monster that cannot be booked. Yeah, he could have set the Eradicator. The Ruma Cannon, of course, will send the uh, Sunseed Locust to the True, graveyard. Yeah, it, it kind of does the same at the end of the day, you're right. Yeah, you do have to wait until... Oh, well, I suppose you've got your own monsters to set face down. You can't activate it unless there's at least a monster on the field that's going to get set face down. But now you're opening up yourself to a Hoppy's Feather uh, Duster. Right? That is indeed true. But there is the normal summon of the Sunsea Twin. That is that is not the one you want to draw, really. <laughs> no, that is a card you want to special summon out with the sewing, usually. Oh, did we see a, a sphere mode there in Yo's hand? I mean, Yo is I running the card, that's for I sure. Think, I think I saw it. I think I saw flashes of it. It's a very scary card. It is indeed. I think his list actually looks Ooh. quite similar to the one of Din Kabui. And that also played Super Polymerization, which has been activated right here. Super Polymerization, incredibly powerful lately. This card just integrated into the deck by Din Kabui and Jack Verma at the German National Championship. And it made the deck so much more powerful. It is so much better going second now. And also going first, having a Super Polymerization set. Crazy. And I think that explains now why we did all of the other stuff before, because we wanted to draw a card with the Ariana, so we had something to discard with the Super Polymerization, because the last card in hand might be very valuable.
Yeah, it makes sense to draw a card before you're choosing one to discard. I love Garura coming into play here. There's so many fusions nowadays. Almost anything your opponent has in play, you can super polymerization away. Yeah, now there is the sewing. This will most likely special summon out another copy of Loki. There it is. And it looks like we're back to square one right here. Kinda, right? But there is still the Ruma Cannon, so yeah. we have to worry about that. There's also the, the, yeah, I suppose now we've used the Sunseed Sewing as well. And the normal summon. Yep, so it's not really square one. There's a lot of stuff that has already happened, a lot of stuff that Jessica had to do to actually get into this position. And we are going for a Link Summon here. And I would be pretty sure that this is going to be the Iron Mage just man. So is there any way to trigger the life gain effect here now? Because don't you need like both the Loki and the healer in play at the same time in order to gain life points? I think that's true, yeah. We should not really be able to do that anymore. Yo, just waiting for the absolute oh, perfect time. Oh, and there the it cannon. is. We are going for the Daruma Cannon. And we are going to set all of the monsters and send the Jasmine to the graveyard. But Jessica is still at four cards in hand, which is a lot, considering that there is only one more set card by Yoho. And I think that this one can't even be activated, right? No, it was set with the Ariana, and he's already used his one trap card activation. Oh, what's next? She's definitely not done yet. I'm curious, can she really play through all of that? Yo, just maybe missing it. I'm pretty sure he could have added his Kook Lock back to his hand. Oh, oh no, look at that. Like. There's Rika <laughs> Princess activating the effect and special summoning itself. And is that really the Kong Kong on top of it? So we were interrupted wow. on our Sun Avalon stuff, but here is the Rika part of the deck. Kong we Kong. are using the Rika Kong Kong to pretty much set the, glo uh, the glamour. There Kong it is. Kong, such a powerful effect here. Just going to get to tribute off one of your opponent's monsters in order to search two cards from your deck. That sounds like a pretty good trade to me. Maybe try to not tribute the Garura. <laughs> <laughs> Would be smart, yeah. Also, it can only be monsters, not the back row. So that's kind of unfortunate, <laughs> but I think Jessica is doing still very, very fine here. That would be very fun if you could tribute. Oh, we go into the battle phase, attacking into the Ariana, and that will trigger the effect of her Link monster of the Sun of Along Dryas. Oh, that's a very tidy and play. Therefore, the healer once again comes onto the field. This Con Con, we think have to tribute face-up monsters. Is that why Jessica's not tributed anything in the main phase one? Let me just double check on that, but that might very well be the, true, uh, the truth, yeah. Um, do you think that there was maybe a situation that Yoho could have waited for with the Karma Cannon? Like, maybe let your opponent extend a lot more? The, are there even so. ways to negate trap cards except for the regulars? But then you can still react to the Lily Borea, right? I, I would assume so. I think that was pretty, pretty, pretty quick. So Yoho just wants to get it out of the way. He was <laughs> saying before the match, I am totally in love with the fact that I'm now going to the World Championship. So this is all just a plus here. But that might have been a little bit preemptive. Also, following up on your question, yes, indeed, Riga Konkon needs to tribute face-up monsters on the opponent's side of the field. And therefore, it was smart to first of all go into the battle phase. There is the second copy of the Aroma Seraphy, Jasmine. Yep. And getting some good value out of just the battle phase there, both attacking to trigger the San Avalon Dryas and flipping the Ariana face up so you can tribute it later. Honestly, I think I'm more and more impressed by the Rika deck the more I watch it. Like, seriously. Like, the, for the first time, of course, it was the weekend of Marcus Patel last year, exactly one year ago at the European Championship. But since then, I do get some new ways how you can play the deck. And of course, Jessica, for so many people, being the mastermind of the deck, consistently topping with it, and also basically building the deck back in the day for Marcus Patel, yep. and now playing it herself here into the finals. Yeah, what a story, having like Marcus win it, despite you know, Jessica building it and then Marcus winning with it, and then Jessica being like, yep, but I, I, it, it is me. <laughs> I'm going to win with it now, too. Yes, so we are going for the Snowdrop plus Mudan. And we're getting to a lot of monsters on the field, and as Leonard was saying earlier, I think if we would have just waited with the Daruma Cannon, we could have just taken care of all of the Rika stuff as well. Yeah, it's tricky to figure out exactly when the best way to activate it is, but maybe it, it does look now like it was too early. Especially if you're playing versus Jessica Robertson, who is just, as Basti already stated, a mastermind of this deck. We have so much going on right here. I think we're going to end on Bangalancer and Teardrop and Ricochet, which is just 
a lot. That's almost as good as a going first board of yeah. the deck. Yeah, totally. Yeah, is it is it possible for Bengal answer about space stars? I can't imagine it is because you have to take damage equal to the attack, right? So, so we do also have the ability to monster, just yes, yes. tribute <laughs> one monster here already on this turn by the teardrop. Another card being sat. And look at Yoho, he was really, really happy after he rolled that 12 to begin the duel. But now he's kind of unsatisfied with the direction that first game has taken so far. Yeah, I feel like when a lot of people say that this matchup is favored for the Labyrinth, I think the key cards you need to find are things like Skill Drain, maybe Gozen Match as well. I think there's a lot of different attributes going on between Rika and San Avalon. But without finding either of those cards, Jessica just happily pushing through all of the, all of the defenses. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. To be we fair, Yo is not out of this by far because I think he has used a big welcome so far. Was it just a regular labyrinth? Uh, welcome labyrinth? Uh, it was a big, big welcome. And he also has the Garura. So the battle phase is not the most important f important phase for the labyrinth deck. So he can actually just crash with the Garura and get another draw and maybe find himself back into this game. The thing is, we probably just are going to give that Garuda back into the extra deck, aren't we? Because um, there's not that many great cards to bounce back to the hand, like main deck monster-wise from the Labyrinth deck, so you could just also go after the Garuda to deny the draw. So we're done with something the Ariana now. Is there maybe a possible link play? That's a good question. <laughs> doesn't normally happen with Labyrinth, is it? <laughs> check the extra deck. In terms of link monsters, I can tell you there's a Nightmare Phoenix which might be handy here. Oh, we are immediately going to tribute the oh. Ariana. That's strong. Also, Muckcracker is a card that is not only being played in the live turn Runic Sprite deck, but also this Labyrinth deck. Oh, another big welcome. Jessica is considering her Rika sheet here. I don't know what the point behind that would be. We're going to resolve the big welcome and immediately add bag card from the field, so I don't think that we're going to put back the Garura in the extra deck. Do you reckon Yo has got a, an English copy there in his graveyard? Do you reckon that was... Because oh. <laughs> Jessica made so, yeah. a motion to read it and then... Uh, was that a concession oh. maybe from Oh, Yo? wow! Jessica Robinson leading 1-0 after going second against Yoho's Labyrinth deck. Super impressive stuff. Like, seriously, the trap deck setting up really, really well, even having super yeah. polymerization, and still Jessica just slicing through it. Yeah. The impatience here, I think, was yeah. key. Maybe wait with the Daruma Karma Cannon. Maybe there was a reason why he did not activate it. Maybe he knows there is some kind of card that she can summon or play there that just takes my Daruma Karma Cannon out. So I have to hope that this is enough. But two big interruptions on the starting of the combo, and then we still just lost. <laughs> Yeah, it was, was pretty impressive for sure. Yeah, that was very cool to see. Because, I mean, I guess when you're not super experienced with the Rika deck, maybe you think like, oh, if I just, like, they, they start with a one Sun Seed, maybe if I stop the Sun Seed, yeah. that's enough. But definitely not, apparently. No. Yeah, that's definitely not the case. Now uh, we saw that there was Eradicator being considered. And honestly, Eradicator feels okay-ish versus Rika, but it's much more about the monsters of deck. Yeah. And therefore, we could see Full Force Virus coming in here. How do you like Full Force Virus in this matchup? In my head, I think it's very good, but I don't know all of the defense points of all of the la <laughs> of all of the Rika point. monsters. <laughs> you know, like Princess maybe has two thousand, um, Mudan maybe has two thousand. I, I think but a I couple might be of them do have up. a couple of high defense points. So I could tell you, Mudan is actually twenty four hundred, and Rika Princess is pretty small. Yeah, oh, she's Rika, zero, zero. Zero. Okay, but so that sounds pretty good. On the other hand, getting Princess into the graveyard also is a double edged sword <laughs> because they can use its effects. So it's also not very perfect. On the other side, Jessica Robinson certainly not going to bring in one of the most popular side deck cards this weekend being drawn Lockbird. That doesn't do anything yeah, versus I, the I Labyrinth deck. But evenly matched and Cosmic Cyclone do look a whole lot better. She respected the back row deck a lot. And the card we mentioned earlier, the Predator Plant Spider Orchid. And card that you well. can search with Rika Glamour. And then, um, yeah, you can use it to destroy a face of spell or trap. So that's, I think, deliberately intended to destroy things like skill drain or goes and match. Totally. And then there, on top of that is triple tactics thrust in there too. So evenly, feather duster, all of those cards can actually be just searched out from the deck. So that's really, really powerful all around. To be fair, thrust not the best cards because you can play around it pretty well as the labyrinth player if you want to, but maybe bring it in as a surprise and your opponent is just going to run into it. I mean, when we watched game one, we saw that your whole just 
That is true. Immediately started to play into it by just on the first thing started to use monster effects. Uh, but maybe he knows that Frost is more of a side deck card, so he can be less careful about it in game one, and then game two he just yeah. values it a lot higher. That is definitely something that is possible. I'm incredibly happy. And I think the cutting has been done on the deck, so let's go right back to the table for game number two. Yoho An versus Jessica Robinson for the second time now here in our top four match. And Yoho is down a game, but still very happy as he's also going to the World Championship in Japan. But I'm sure he will try to turn this game around here. Sometimes when you're just overwhelmed with happiness, you can't even think. <laughs> Fair point, yeah. I, I know that feeling. Oh, look oh. at that. He's just spreading his hand down to the table. Classic sad fight by Yoho. Applause from the crowd. The crowd love is it. loving it. They're celebrating. The classic old school set by, but there's the oh, ice. No, and she shakes her hand. Jessica Robinson advances to the final with the Harpy Spender Duster. Four, five. <laughs> Holy, what was that? Wow. I was saying Yoho is about to turn the game around. Then no. he set five cards, and the Harpy Spender Duster just. Break the entire field. That oh. is the most iconic way to enter the finals of the European Championship, let me tell you. That's the most iconic way to beat a deck running on some trap cards, isn't it? It's also, like, how do you beat this deck? The, Just draw the duster. The dramaturgy here, right? The crowd celebrates the set five. And then the feather duster just to take it all away within seconds. That was beautiful. Your whole wow. immediately reaching over for the handshake. Jessica Robinson advancing to the finals, possibly fulfilling the UK legacy of winning Euros with Rika. Yeah, it's the Rika arc, basically. The Rika lore. <laughs> Last year, the European Championship has been won by Rika, and it might be time again. How does that even happen for a rogue deck? If this deck is winning this year now, is it just going to be not a rogue deck yeah, anymore? Can we, can we still call it? Yeah. It had about maybe 4%, was it, of the deck breakdown? I think so, yeah. I'd still call that pretty rogue. That's like 1 in 25 players. That's really not many at all. But I also have a follow-up question. Are, like, Germans even allowed to play the deck? Because it seems like only UK <laughs> players can actually can I, what can pilot I say? this deck there are, successfully. There are some secret, secret things that our English players play. I think we may be having um, we a have chance a nice to... match to show Oh, yeah. Guys. Go for it. Yes, of course. So we have the last playoff match of the points qualifier, and we are just going to show you that now so you can ex experience all of it. So, guys, see you back in the finals. Don't go anywhere.